Hey Mustangs, in this video we're going to take a look at movement across the cell membrane. Um, so basically we're looking at how stuff gets in and out of the cell. Now what we want to think about is the fact that every single one of our cells is a living thing. Now we look at ourselves and we consider ourselves one single individual, but in reality we're trillions of individuals all working together um, as one. So every single one of those trillions of individual cells is a living thing. And every single one of your cells needs oxygen and nutrients, and every single one of your cells produces waste. Now, we see this happening on the macro level, so on the big level. We see ourselves eating. We see ourselves um, breathing in oxygen, breathing out carbon dioxide. And we see ourselves releasing waste, so urine and feces. Um, but even at the smaller level, each and every one of our cells, since they're all living things too, they are taking in oxygen and nutrients and they are releasing waste as well. Now the waste that your cells release are actually collected in your urine and released from your body in that way. So basically what happens is every single one of your cells when it produces certain types of waste it dumps it into the blood and when the blood goes through your body and reaches your kidneys the kidneys filter out the waste into your urine and uh, your water as well, any excess water, and that gets released from your body. So if you've ever gone to the doctor's office and had to pee in the little cup and you actually see your urine there, you're actually looking at waste along with water, um, but that waste has been collected from each and every one of your cells. So that's something to think about. So if every single one of your cells need a, needs to take nutrients in and oxygen in and take waste out, how is that stuff getting in and out of the cell? All right, so these nutrients and oxygen that your cells need and these wastes that your cells produce are all molecules. Okay, um, So we're going to take a look at how these molecules are going to get in and out of the cell and uh, there's several different ways that this can happen. Um, so we're going to look at three different ways that molecules can move across the cell membrane and they have to go through the cell membrane somehow since the cell membrane remember surrounds the outside of the cell. Okay, so it's the outer barrier of the cell. So all molecules are going to have to pass through the cell membrane to get in or out of the cell. Okay, um, so we're going to take a look at three different ways things can get through the cell membrane. Okay, all right. So the first way is called diffusion. Okay, now in diffusion. I'm going to draw a picture of my cell membrane here. So there's my, there's a lipid. Remember we have a lipid bilayer that makes up our cell membrane. Here's a protein. And some more lipids here. Okay. So in the process of diffusion, molecules are going to move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration across the cell membrane. Now molecules, one thing you want to remember is molecules always want to move from high to low concentration. Now what I mean by that, high concentration means an area where there's a lot of molecules and low concentration means an area with very little molecules, very few, sorry, don't no, want to use your word little, very few molecules. Okay. Um, so in our example here, I'm going to make my molecules green. So I'm going to create on this side of the cell membrane, I'm going to create a high concentration of molecules. Doesn't mean high as in up, but high as in a large amount of molecules. Okay. So here on this side of the cell membrane, I have a high concentration of molecules. And on this side of the cell membrane, I'm going to put a low concentration. So I'm going to put like four molecules here. So this would be low concentration of molecules. Okay. Now mo since molecules always want to move from high to low, these molecules are going to want to move across the cell membrane to this low area of concentration. Now they're not all going to move across. Molecules will move from high to low concentration until they we reach what we call equilibrium, until there's about an equal amount on each side. Once they reach equilibrium, 
they won't completely stop moving, but they'll try to stay equal on each side, so an equal amount of molecules on each side. Now, during the process of simple diffusion here, molecules can move across the cell membrane by actually squeezing through the lipids here. Okay, so in the process of diffusion, molecules will move across the cell membrane by squeezing through the lipids from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration until they reach equilibrium. So that's simple diffusion. The second type of movement across the cell membrane is called facilitated diffusion. Okay, so we still have diffusion here. So molecules are still going to want to move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. The facilitated part, well, to facilitate means to kind of help or to guide. Okay, so let's take a look what's going on in facilitated diffusion. All right, so I'm going to draw my cell membrane again. So my lipids, my bilayer, lipid bilayer here. Here's my protein. I'm going to draw on my molecules. So this time I'm going to put a high concentration of molecules on this side of the cell membrane. So high concentration means a lot of molecules. So I'm going to put HC, I'm going to abbreviate it this time, high concentration. On this side I'm going to put an area of low concentration. So very few molecules, I'm going to put LC, low concentration. Okay. So in facilitated diffusion, the molecules are going to want to move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. But this time, here's what the facilitated means. These molecules, they can't just go through the lipids in the cell membrane. They're either too large or they have the wrong charge. So in this case, a protein has to help them get across. So remember, our proteins act like little channels to transport stuff across the cell membrane. So here, these molecules are going to move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration, but they have to go through a protein to do that. Now, they'll keep moving till they reach about equilibrium, and that's facilitated diffusion right there. So very, very similar to diffusion. The only difference is these guys, they have to go through a protein in order to cross the cell membrane. Okay, So that's facilitated diffusion. The third type of transport across the cell membrane is called active transport. Okay. So an active transport, I'm going to draw my cell membrane once again. So my lipid bilayer. There's my protein. draw in my molecules here. Um, so I'm going to put a high concentration of molecules on this side of the cell membrane here. So I'll put HC, high concentration. On this side I'm going to put low concentration, LC. Okay. Now in active transport, we're going to force molecules to move opposite of what they want to do. So remember, molecules always want to move from high concentration to low concentration. In active transport, we're going to force them to go from low to high this time, and we're going to use a protein to do that. Okay, so in active transport, we're forcing them to go against what they want to normally do. Now, because we're forcing them, they usually want to move from high to low, it takes energy for active transport to happen. Okay, so in active transport, we actually have to add energy. So I'm going to add some energy here. So I'm going to do like a little lightning bolt. It takes energy for active transport to happen. So I'm going to put energy. Okay, we must add energy in order to force them to go from lower concentration to high concentration. Okay. Um, so that's active transport. So these are our three main ways that 
uh, molecules can move across the cell membrane. The last box here is for a type of facilitated diffusion. Now it's a special type of facilitated diffusion because it involves water. Water is one of the most important molecules um, for our cells, so it actually gets its own special name. So it is still facilitated diffusion, but because it involves water, scientists gave it a special name called osmosis. Okay. So in osmosis, I'm going to draw my cell membrane once again. Okay. So you should have that cell membrane down. So we have lipids, protein, more lipids, and the only thing that we're missing from this picture to make our cell membrane complete would be of course the protein, I mean the uh, carbohydrates coming off. Okay, so here in osmosis we're going to take a look at how water moves across the cell membrane. Okay, now it's a type of facilitated diffusion. So the water molecules are going to want to move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So this time I'm going to write H2O though. So I'm going to create on this side an area of low concentration. And so I'm going to put LC for low concentration. And on this side of the membrane, I'm going to put a high concentration of water molecules. So since these are molecules, they're going to want to move from an area of high concentration here across to an area of low concentration until they reach equilibrium. Okay. Um, so since it's facilitated diffusion, the water molecules are not going to squeeze through the lipids. They're going to have to go through the cell membrane from high concentration to low concentration through a protein. Okay. Now we've all experienced osmosis in our lifetimes, guaranteed. If you've ever stayed in a bathtub too long or in a pool too long and you get those old people wrinkly fingers, that's osmosis happening. Okay? So you have to picture this. You're in the bath or you're in the pool. You're surrounded by water molecules. So in the bath or pool you have a high concentration of water molecules. Your cells have a lower concentration of water molecules. So the molecules in the pool or the bath want to move across your cell membrane into your cells where there's an area of lower concentration of water. So literally, the water in the pool or bath moves into your cells. Okay? So your cells actually fill up with water and they start to swell and that's why you get those old people wrinkly fingers. Okay? Now if you've ever stayed in a bath or a, a pool too long, your fingertips might feel sore and the reason for that is some of your cells filled up so much with water that they actually exploded. So the water kept going and going in, filling up the cells until boom, they burst open and they've been destroyed. Um, so that, of course, your cells are dying, that's gonna cause pain. Um, so if you've ever stayed in a pool or bathtub too long, you know that sore feeling on your fingertips or even on the bottom of your feet, okay? Um, so that is osmosis there. So those are our three types of movement across the cell membrane, diffusion, facilitated diffusion, active transport, and then osmosis, it has its own special name. It's still a type of facilitated diffusion, but because it deals with water, that's why it gets its own special name. All right, so that's movement across the cell membrane. Uh, make sure you go over each one and you understand uh, the differences and the similarities between them.